Young Living, a family-focused health and wellness multi-level marketing company, are also labeled as an MLM, known for their essential oils and, most importantly, their unique business opportunity. It seems surreal, perfect, and a dream come true for most, but there's more to the story that's toxic, predatory, and to simply put it, a scam. Young Living has established stringent ethical and environmental standards and set the course for principled, sustainable practices across the essential oil industry. 1999, Young Living was sent its first warning letter from the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, about false health claims they were making. When God has placed an opportunity for you to bless your family, find freedom, and help other people find freedom, don't get caught up in the little things, okay? Should just tell everybody that when you hear something like that, run. It is not true. I'm not a doctor. I hope that's obvious. Um, I like sharing things that work for me. I uh, young living under me in the area, right? You're totally right. And then they all just sort of get in this like amalgamate of like negativity. Hi guys, this is Belle here and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, as you guys can tell, we're going to be talking about Young Living. Today's video is something that I have been really prepping for for a long time and I'm so excited to finally be able to bring this to you. So with this entire video, we're going to be doing a major deep dive on Young Living and there are going to be multiple chapters and sections to this entire video. The entire goal of this video is to literally simply break down every aspect of Young Living, why they're problematic, and my overall end goal is to prove to you how problematic and terrifying and very ethical this company is. Um, Young Living is a multi-level marketing company. If you guys don't know what that is, multi-level marketing stands for MLM, or pretty much, if we're going to be honestly real here, in my opinion, it's a, it's a pyramid scheme. But anyways, you guys, let's actually hop into this video. So before we begin, though, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell button down below so that you'll be notified of every single video I post. And now without further ado, let's hop into this Young Living deep dive. Let's go. All right, guys, so I have to pull up my notes here because like there's literally, I have so many pages of information here. So first of all, let's kind of just dive into some of the chapters that we're actually gonna be discussing. So we're gonna be diving into the history, what Young Love Living is, and talk about some things that most promoters don't highlight. Um, a lot of promoters really think, oh, it's just a bunch of suntan and rainbows and this company was founded on good values and that is far from the truth. So some of the things that we're actually gonna talk about in today's video is the history and all the details about Young Living as a whole. We we're going to be diving into the business lawsuits, all the nitty gritty about the business specifically. We're also going to be diving into, we're also going to be diving into the promoter business part. So not just the business as young living, but the business opportunity that we promote, talking about the comp plan, all the big details. So you guys understand fully what they are doing, and what they are not telling you. And then we're going to be diving into the promoters, what they talk about, how they promote it to you and why it all is literally a lie. Additional chapter we're going to talk about is the products of young living. And then last but not least, we are actually gonna wrap up this video with tons of interviews that I've actually been able to have with people who used to be in Young Living and some who are actually in Young Living. So there's so much to dive into and let's start hopping into with the first part, which is the history of Young Living. So Young Living is known for essential oils. They have healthy ingredients. They have health products, things for kids, um, oils that you ingest, which we'll get into later, and so much more. Again, they are known for just overall promoting a non-toxic and green way of living. However, they do not in any way have a clean history. So let's dive into the CEO. So the founder was a man named Gary Young. And by the way, I do want to give you guys an entire heads up. Every single thing that I have researched and have been talking about will be linked in the description below. All of my sources will be there. So you guys are able to look it up and find it all yourself. But nonetheless, diving into Gary Young, the CEO. So Gary Young actually was a very, very problematic individual. In 1982, he opened an unlicensed clinic that he was giving medical advice to. That's literally not okay. He offered medical services in including childbirth assistance. So we already know where this is going. In 1983, Young was actually a subject of a joint undercover investigation that was launched by the Spokane Police Department and the state of Washington. And the reason being was because something bad happened during one of his little medical practices. So there was a case going on where Young allegedly left his daughter, his newborn baby, in a whirlpool for an hour after birth, leading to her death. Again, this is all just from what I've been reading from articles and allegedly this is 
is something that happened. Nonetheless, though, this caused a lot of controversy, and this also fell into something that was really suspicious, considering he labeled himself as a professional and also ran an un unlicensed clinic. And I am actually reading directly from an article right now that I really want to discuss. Gary was arrested on medical charges related to his newborn baby's death the following year. The former operator of an East Spokane health club whose infant daughter died during delivery in a whirlpool bath there last fall was arrested Tuesday for practicing medicine without a license court records indicate. The coroner determined that Gary Young's child did in fact die due to oxygen deprivation. And he actually did indeed get charges. He was in fact arrested and charged with practicing medicine without a license, which he ultimately pled guilty to. He was fined $250 and given a 60-day suspended sentence. He also was ordered to, of course, naturally not violate those laws ever again. However, he did not stop there as if he would learn and not be, I don't know, traumatized by your child's death. That's just my perspective here. In 1986, he still continued on his bullshit. In 1986, he started promoting himself as a naturopathic doctor in Mexico. He offered detoxifications for cancers. Like, I'm not even kidding. This guy is terrifying. He was using treatments which efficacy was questioned in an investigation in the Los Angeles Times. And with this going on and people were very much questioning him, they decided to actually test out a theory. What they did was they actually said pig and chicken blood into him and his clinic. And with the results that they came back, this man suddenly claimed, oh, your blood has cancerous cells. Both of these blood types have cancerous cells. Funny is allegedly he was in no way able to depict that it was not in fact human blood, but he immediately said that they were dying of cancer. This is actually a quote from a direct article. To test the veracity of Young's clinical diagnosis, a reporter submitted cat and chicken blood to a clinic employee, my bad, it was cat, whatever, um, who failed to determine that the samples were non-human and further diagnosed that the patient had an aggressive form of cancer and liver disease. So what I'm getting from this, again, from me reading all of this, it's giving me the illusion that this guy has a major problem with trying to tell people that they have something wrong with them when they don't. And I feel like that's going to play a big role in where Young Living came to be. And then in 1993 was when Young Living was born. The company since then has faced complaints and lawsuits and an investigation involving a, a sudden death of an employee in 2000. And reports to the FDA during this year of 2013 and 2014 due to adverse reactions of their own products in Young Living. And also in 2017, there was federal misdemeanor charges because he voluntarily disclosed illegal trafficking of certain oils. And then in 2019, there was a class action lawsuit claiming that they were in fact a pyramid scheme. Now here's the thing, in 2018 there was a lawsuit, however Gary Young did in fact pass away in 2018. And who is the CEO now? Actually his third wife is the one that is carrying the title. And the reason why I'm sharing the history of the CEO and everything is because I need you guys to understand where this company originated from and came from. We see the history of this person, we see the very sketchy past, we see him being literally specifically told not to practice medicine but leaves the country to do so then suddenly comes up with this brilliant company and has nothing but still a problematic history with the MLM itself. Right there, that should be very alarming to anyone who might be considering joining this company because it was founded off of very unethical beliefs and clearly it's still running in the family and the person that is still running this company is his third wife. I'm just saying. That's already problematic in itself. Seeing his track record, he's trying to make himself to be a doctor, someone that's all knowing, and that is very, very terrifying and unhealthy, along with trying to claim that people needed something in order to actually be healthy, which is something we're gonna talk about later in regards to them discussing and claiming that you need these essential oils to actually be healthy individuals, detoxes, all of this stuff. It's insane, inaccurate, and very dangerous. And I wanna share that again with you guys because this is important information. You guys deserve to hear it. And no promoter is going to share this. They're going to sugarcoat it, hide it, or some of them don't even know. So now let's actually talk about the business aspect and some of the deeper things that, again, they're not talking about. First of all, going into lawsuits. So actually, this is more of a recent lawsuit that's been popping up, according to the documents right over here, January 20th of 2021. There is actually a lawsuit that's going on right now that says that there's no medical benefit to Young Living's essential oils. Because Young Living has been making these insane claims, somebody is now finally calling them out again. This is literally just ruining their history as we go. Young Living essential oils was hit 
with a proposed class action lawsuit this week claiming that consumers have been misled by the company's statements regarding the health-related benefits of the popular essential oils. I want to read off some more information about this article because I think it's very important to highlight because they are literally lying to you constantly and they do not care. Therapeutic grade. The 30-page lawsuit centers on the claim that consumers purchasing living essential oils or at least paid as much as they did, based on the MLM company's representation, that the products are therapeutic and provided a number of health-related benefits. However, according to the suit, each bottle of Young Living's essential oils prominently state that the products are therapeutic grade. Now, to support its therapeutic claim, Young Living allegedly represents that its products offer various physical, mental, or medical benefits, including claims that specific versions of its oils can help promote feelings of stability and calm. I hear that one all the time. Help relieve tension during times of occasional stress. Help support restful sleep. Support the feeling of normal, clear breathing. Boost your positive outlook on life. All of these medical claims that they have been selling people. And what's so sad is they are taking advantage of anyone who will believe it. And that's why I'm talking about this is because we can see, we are barely in this video and we can see the horrible history from the CEO and how it originated. And they're still on going lawsuits about this and how they're lying to people claiming they have healthy things that are going to help you out when in reality it's a bunch of shit. And to continue this, I want to read off the last bit of this article, which says Young Living, the suit says, expects consumers to rely on these representations when making purchase decisions. The problem according to the case is that the essential oils sold by Young Living actually provide no health related benefits. Literally listen to this, meaning consumers have paid a premium price for a product that they cannot deliver on promises. Right there, this lawsuit is literally go into notes and diving into all the problematic things and clearly stating that this is an issue and they were very aware of their actions and promoting this to people who are very naive. They were promoting these products to people who are extremely naive and taking advantage of them. We can see the oils that are honestly highly expensive and seeing maybe oils that are $60, $50 or even more than that and how they absolutely have no real good health related benefits is insane. They've been cashing in on a lie for years. Now, this is another class action law, so I want to highlight that this article was actually posted on August 13th of 2020. Young Living Pyramid Scheme alleged in recent lawsuit. Now, it continues on by saying that the membership supposedly allowed people and promoters to collect a commission off of the new recruits and the sales of their recruits. The plaintiffs noted that they were also encouraged to encouraged to aggressively recruit other people to endeavor in the interest of making a profit. O'Shaughnessy, and I feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong, said she found it difficult but not impossible to recruit new people. She also said she had purchased more than 4,700 in Young Living products, but only earned 380 from, from her new work. The Young Living controversy class action lawsuit claims that this was common with other participants who were left with bottles of essential oils and little to show for their involvement with the company. Young Living Pyramid Scheme class action lawsuit cites Young Living's 2015 income disclosure statement, which reported that, that members made an average of $30 in 2015 and 25 in 2016. A lawsuit literally calling them out for being a pyramid scheme. Like, oh my God, these, like, this is what I'm talking about. Nobody's going to tell you this stuff. This is insane. So those are two just major lawsuits that I wanted to highlight because they highlight the products and the business opportunity as a whole. And so far we are not looking good in regards to Young Living whatsoever. Back to the lawsuit, let's actually dive into the other business stuff, the business opportunity that everyone promotes. They promote this business opportunity that brings health and financial well-being and it will help pay your bills and make you feel stress-free along with the literally snorting oils for crying crying out loud and working a part of this business opportunity, you are going to be better and feel better. It's so stupid. And with all these claims, again, it is still far from the truth. And right now, some of you actually may be watching this video because you might have been interested in joining Young Living. And I'm here to share with you that it is not worth it whatsoever. So first of all, let's talk about the whole thing of business opportunity. We see many people in Young Living promoting, join the business, join the team. You start your own business when that right there is completely in fact wrong. According to the policies and procedures of Young Living, and I quote, you are an independent sales contractor and are not a purchaser of a franchise or business opportunity. They literally have this in the fine print stating that this is in no way a business opportunity. So everyone that says it is literally lying to you. On top of that, the website even, Young Living's website literally states business opportunity, join the business, grow your business. But in their fine print, it says completely otherwise. And I'm saying this because please don't trust a company that says something for their face up front, but then in the 
the little details that most people don't even read, they say the exact opposite to you. So now we are actually going to be diving into the comp plan, which is something that's really important for people to look at. The compensation plan pretty much shows you how you're going to be making money in Young Living. Now, th there's a lot of problems with this compensation plan. And right here, we can see on the front page, it literally says building your business. Again, another way of lying to you up front, but then keeping it all hidden, you are not actually starting your own business. So here's the actual compensation plan right over here for Young Living. So they have many definitions right over here on the side. However, I want to actually look at the additional earning opportunities. They have many different ways of earning. Most of them, in my opinion, are mainly focused on recruiting. Fast start bonuses. You earn a generous 25% bonus up to $200 each on your new personally enrolled members orders during the first three calendar months. So the fast start bonus is literally going to be mainly determined if you receive it or not, according to how many people you have joined your team and how many people order products. And what's so sad to me is you have to actually purchase a starter kit when you join the company or the business. And so if you recruit people and they naturally have to purchase a starter kit, that's where you get the money. So it's not as if it's actual legit sales. This is literally requiring you to have new enrolled members or teammates. This next one is the ER bonus. If a member or preferred customer enrolls on ER with a 100% PV order at any time, excluding the wholesale membership enrollment month, the enroller will earn an additional $15 bonus once the ER order processes successfully. So again, member, they're talking about you can get a bonus just because of recruitment. The next one, starter kit bonus. Earn a one-time $25 cash bonus when your new personally enrolled member orders the premium starter kit. Again, when somebody joins the company, that when you make money is because they have to buy a starter kit. It's all because of recruitment. Another one, retail earnings. When you personally sponsor retail customers, you may earn the 24% difference between the retail and wholesale price for their orders. Again, this is a fourth example of how you're going to make money is because you have team members. Like this is ridiculous. So when they claim, oh, well, you can make commissions off of the essential oils, it's a crock of shit because the main money maker clearly is recruitment, is telling people to join. And it's very problematic to me because let's say you join the company and let's say you were very excited and wanting to actually earn money, except for your upline is telling you, hey, the only way that you're going to really make it is like if you recruit people, now you have to recruit people into a business that you don't even know is going to be successful as not. So you're going to start falling into a horrible cycle of saying, oh, you need to join my team. This is the greatest thing ever when it in fact is not. So it's the blind leading the blind in this situation. Continuing on though, it says building your business. So it shows all these levels right over here and the requirements that you need in order to actually be able to grow in this company. Now, really quickly, I do want to highlight some definitions that are very important with this. They have it on the side. And again, this comp plan will be linked in the description below. PV is personal volume is the total monthly volume of your personal order. So anything you order, or I think somebody orders through you is in fact what PV stands for. However, OGV is organizational group volume, the monthly volume of your entire organization, meaning the mo money that is made by your team, the sales that are made by your team. Now PGV is personal group volume, the monthly volume in an organization, excluding any silver or higher rank volume and any qualifying legs. Still, OGV and PGV mean people that are under you on your team that are selling products or mainly recruiting people. Now let's roll down to building your business. The building your business and building on your foundation, you can now focus on helping others create their success. Again, helping others create success is literally a little fun way that they're trying to say recruiting more people onto your team. So of course, naturally we see like the qualifications to be a member, the very, very lower line of it is you need to have about 50, it looks like 50 to 100 PV in order to be qualified. You need to spend that much. And again, that is for every single month. Moving on to star, this is the second level. You need to have 100 PV. Now this is when it kicks into where you actually need to have teams and people underneath you. You need people to spend about $500 in order to for you to actually level up. Now, in order to get to the senior star one, you need to hit 100 PV, you know, something that you bought or sold, whatever. However, your team needs to sell 2000. Instead, now for the next level, it is executive. However, you are literally going to have to be having your team sell about $4,000 in products. But now there's a new problem. Leg volume per each leg needs to be at least 
two of a thousand dollars. That is literally insane. All of the levels and all of the ranks require recruitment. There is no way around it. And I'm just trying to show you this because again, I'm trying to prove a point that they literally need you to recruit more people. And the main moneymaker is recruitment. And what's so sad to me is when we see the business or promoters actually say, oh, well, you can sell products. It's fine. It's fine. You cannot actually make money or do good or grow in this company whatsoever if you just sell products. You literally have to actually recruit people in order to even remotely make any money back. So now that we've actually seen that, let's dive into the income disclosure statement. So the income disclosure statement pretty much is a entire document that shows how much the promoters make every year on average and the average of per rank. So let's actually look into that because this is very, very important. So this right here is actually a disclosure statement. So right here, it says the direct selling company selling essential oils, supplements, and other lifestyle products. Young Living offers opportunities for our members to build a business or simply receive discounts on our products. Whatever your interest in the company, we hope to count you among the more than 3 million Young Living members joining us in our mission to bring Young Living essential oils to every home in the world. That's another thing I want to highlight. They have 3 million people that are a part of this business opportunity. And so when they say, oh, this isn't oversaturated, 3 million people are a part of this. That is literally insane. It is oversaturated. It's a very oversaturated market, which again is another proof, proof right there to show you that the chances of even remotely growing or making money or doing well in this is slim to none. So looking at this income disclosure statement, we actually could see that the average for all promoters in 2019 was $236 a year. That's it. 236 a freaking year. That is not okay. The first three ranks add up 98.8% of all distributors. Totaling the average for all three ranks, you get about $577 for the entire year on average for the first amount. Almost 100% of people are averaging out about $577. Like, how is that good? How is that a great business opportunity? How is that a life-changing moment? This is, again, stuff that these promoters and this business will not tell you. 89.6% had an average of $3 per year. The highest amount made on the lowest rank was $873. The lowest was $3, and the highest even was $873. But still, tell me, how was that revolutionary? How was that gonna help? How was that gonna make you change your life and for the better? Like, so actually looking at the star level right now, $251 is average and the highest was around $2,647. But considering this, 98.8% of distributors made little to no money. While you're probably thinking that this is a few extra thousand dollars for somebody, this is still not including other fees, requirements, the cost of replacing products, the cost of buying new launches because Young Living does launch products. And again, you cannot promote a product that you don't physically have and everything else under the sun in order to keep going. There's no physical way that that's going to actually work out. Also not to mention that you actually have a tax percentage of about 25 to 30% of your overall total check. So for example, right now, I'm just going to whip it out for you. Take 2,467 and just time that by about 25%. $661.75 is what's going to be taken out of that paycheck during tax season. So I wonder why they're actually promoting this as a good business opportunity. And the reason why I truly think it is they're trying to promote to you saying that this is great and this is amazing because they are trying to use you as a leverage to get money money and to gain and to potentially hit the highest percentage of the company. 98.8% of distributors literally made hardly anything at all. And another thing that we're not including is there's a really sad trend of many promoters who actually purchase more products or buy their ranks. I'm not kidding. We see this in so many other MLMs, including Young Living. If they're really close to a rank, but they haven't hit it yet, maybe they haven't recruited enough or maybe they haven't sold enough. They will literally buy more products in order to hit it. So that way they don't feel they don't have FOMO and they don't feel like that they are an absolute failure. This is stuff that literally happens. And when you're so sucked into this whole perspective of, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to really upset my upline. You do it out of wanting to do the best that you can and not wanting to be considered a failure. Last thing I want to highlight with this compensation plan is to the far right, this compensation plan actually shows how long and how many months it actually takes to achieve a rank. So how many months on average does it achieve, take to achieve the next rank? For the second level, it's an average of 15 months. The lowest is one, but 15 is a high average in order to even remotely hit the second rank of the company. Next level takes on an average of 22 months. Again, one month being the fastest, but the average, 
the average. That means there's people that took even longer to hit that level. And then the one after again is literally 29 and so on and so forth. These numbers are literally just pr proving to me that the return is not great whatsoever. So far, what do we see? We see a very, very unethical history. We see a very problematic CEO. We see a lot of lawsuits. We see a lot of sneaky things that they're not telling you. We also see the lack of money that people are making and we can see the clear dependency on recruitment. But we are literally so far from being done here because there's so much more we need to dive into. So we're gonna talk about some of the common questions about Young Living that I'm actually able to talk about and debunk. Again, some of these will also be highlighted in the interviews at the very end, so make sure you stay tuned for those as well. The question is, will I be trained in this business? That is another thing that they promote is, you'll be trained, we'll lock arms, I've got you, I can talk you through this, I will show you the way. But half the time, a lot of these leaders are again, just the blind leading the blind. Most of them don't even know what they're doing, they don't understand any basics of business, and half of the things that they're gonna preach to you is hardcore recruitment, cold messaging, and promoting very unethical and unhealthy things regarding the business and the products as a whole. So sure, they might train you, but a lot of it is just complete bullshit. I'm telling you, there's so many times where I've seen many top promoters of this company get onto Zoom calls with major teams, all just to simply waste an hour and a half worth of people's time talking about their story and how successful they are and throwing out inspirational stuff. It's nothing that's gonna actually help you. And another thing proving my point is if the trainings actually were that great and worked so well, we would not be seeing a 98.8% .8 chance of literally making absolutely nothing or hardly anything at all. Another common question that I see is, do you actually own your business when you join Young Living? And I highlighted this previously, but this is a big flat out no. That's an illusion that they give to you to make you feel empowered and successful and like you're a part of something bigger than what it really is, when in fact, it's literally nothing. You are purchasing a starter kit, you have not created any products, and all the people that are promoting as such have not done anything actually remotely important to create the company besides make them money. The promoters are not business owners, they are literally glorified customers of the company. The main profit that Young Living actually makes is mainly from the people that are involved. We clearly saw it previously in the numbers that they have a 3 million promoters total. Do we realize 3 million promoters is going to make them a shit ton of money every single year? That is where their income is coming from. And no, you do not own your own business. And another question that I see is, does work my hard work really determine if I get paid well or not? And that is a complete false lie that they will throw out to you. They will claim that you need to work hard to make this paycheck. Well, rightfully so, you do have to work hard to earn any paycheck for that matter, including in an MLM. However, the hard work is gonna be recruiting people. And even still, there are people that are at the top of this company, allegedly, purchasing ranks and trying to keep their income why is that? That is very problematic. Even people at the top are not doing good and are struggling. That is what I'm talking about. No matter how hard you work, you are still not going to be able to do well. And again, clearly, according to the statistics, almost everyone does not do well unless it is the top 1% of people. And even sometimes the top 1% is not even doing good whatsoever. And the last question that I want to highlight is, can you grow and not recruit at all? And again, previously stating what I was showing earlier in the compensation plan and income disclosure statement, the main bonuses and ways of ranking up is requirements of recruitment. There is no way of actually growing in the business. And another thing that I want to bring to your attention, just so you know, it brings this to your perspective as well. If you would like, look up the top earners in Young Living. Look all of them up. Does any one of them only sell products? No, all of them have a massive, massive team underneath them. That proves to you already that everyone at the top had to have a team to get there. And the problem is, is they profited off of the losses of everyone else because they received all of those bonuses from people purchasing into a dream. And that's the sad thing is all the people underneath them are working their asses off for the personal gain of the top 1%. And another thing that I do wanna highlight as well is the market is excessively oversaturated, so your chances are literally slim to none. I know they said previously that around 3 million promoters exist. However, I was able to do calculations and they said that 67% of them were in fact active. So that left us about 2 million people that were total in promoters. So again, still highly oversaturated and that's a lot of money that they're bringing in from people who are being sold a dream. So now actually let's dive into the promoters because we've already talked about a lot about the the business, but the promoters are very, very toxic as well. Now I do want to say and really highlight as well before we actually dive into this part, I know not all promoters are bad. I know not all of them know what's going on. I know a lot of them are naive. I also believe a lot of them are excessively brainwashed into this very terrifying cult. But however, I still want to highlight that a lot of these things are very problematic and still need to be called out. I really do hope a lot of these people someday learn and I honestly hope the young living goes under. But nonetheless, I know not all promoters are the exact same. However, a lot of them act very similarly in their 
their beliefs and the ways that they share this business. So let's kind of dive into how the promoters literally just promote this business as a whole. So they go on with how it's life changing, it's healthy. We see all these different pages really focusing on natural essential oils, clean ways of healing and eating, all this craziness. And every single thing involves essential oils, even discussing your mental health. And the company does it and the promoters are doing the exact same thing, following the business's suit. And there are insane examples to this. So for example, something that I'm noticing is Young Living and the promoters are literally shoving out recipes about ingesting oils. I literally watched a Young Living woman talk about making lemon frosting by using her lemon essential oil. And clearly, according to the poison control, that is very, very toxic for your body and unhealthy. It is a highly concentrated form of oil and that is not something that is good. If people are actually recommending to use carrier oils mixed in with essential oils, like for example, coconut oil and put in lemon essential oil and maybe rubbing it into your skin to test it, then what in the world makes anyone think that they should be ingesting this stuff, period? For example, Young Living has a YouTube channel and they even have stated before that you shouldn't be ingesting these oils. However, how come we have summer mocktails, coffees, and hot chocolates that are being represented with essential oils mixed in? They're literally promoting this as a normal thing to people. They are trying to normalize it. So then therefore the promoters start discussing it as well. I have heard of terrifying horror stories of people putting essential oils in their eyes, ingesting them, smelling them, putting them on their skin and having horrific reactions, but they still promote it as clean, healthy. They have a very, very bad perspective of healthy products and it's not okay whatsoever. And also a study are showing that ingesting the oils are very toxic and Young Living is still promoting it, that already clearly shows you that their perspective is more on money than true health and wellness. Another big issue that I have with a lot of these promoters is so many of them are promoting how great this lifestyle is, how amazing this business is, how they can stay home with their kids, how they are financially free. However, how is that remotely possible when their own income disclosure statement says almost 98.8% of people hardly make a single thing at all? So we see that a lot of them are either being brainwashed or totally okay with promoting this even though they are probably behind the scenes not making a single thing and they're struggling and they're promoting this because they are hoping that someone will join them will spend a decent amount of money on a starter kit and be able to push them to the next level and that's the thing is the hardcore dependency on selling a dream is so toxic and terrifying they're promoting a false lifestyle and to further this if we see the numbers of loss many of them are actually aware of the losses and the financial out the lack of financial gain in this. So why is it they are so focused on recruiting people? And again, that is just because they are trying to get people to join them so they have the chance of becoming that 1%, even though that chance is literally non non-existent. One more thing that I wanna highlight that I think is very important, and I feel like there are gonna be people that are maybe current Young Living promoters watching this, and I feel it's really very, very significant to mention. There are many, many toxic perspectives where if there is someone that decides to finally leave the Young Living MLM, LM and get away from it and because they realize that they are losing too much money or there is no gain and there's too much loss and pressure, every single person that's leaving the company is always labeled as lazy or they didn't work hard enough, they didn't try enough, they didn't believe in the dream. And I want to tell you right now, you are in no way fault of that because clearly we can see the system is set up to fail you. This You are not failing the MLM. It is literally made to screw you over. And again, you are not somebody that is lazy because we can clearly see an other insane insanely difficult avenues or businesses other people are doing well and are able to succeed. For example, we do not see these high failure rates in terms of Harvard or other colleges for that matter. Things that require a large investment and require to be very independent and bust your ass off to gain a degree. We don't see that percentage of dropouts whatsoever, but how come we see such an insane amount of people that are not doing well in here? Again, for example, even in medical school, the dropout and the failure rates of these are literally so small in comparison to the failure rates of the people in this MLM. Just proving my point that some of the hardest things out there are literally still doing so much better and are having higher success rates than this multi-level marketing company. Even small businesses, actual small businesses, they literally have statistics showing that if you create your own small business, you have a major higher chance of succeeding and doing better than a multi-level marketing. What's so terrifying to me as well as a literal only no product based pyramid scheme, something that has literally no products. You have a greater chance of succeeding than something like this. There is a major problem with every single number. It clearly points out that you are the one that is failing all of these people. And what's so sad to me is 2 million people, 98.8% of them, it's literally a million nine hundred sixty-nine thousand and eight hundred people that are not doing well whatsoever. So let's actually look at some examples of video footage and everything of these promoters talking 
about this company. And the reason why I show a lot of video footage is because I can't exactly talk about these things and not have physical proof of what I'm discussing. And these are major representations of that. So let's dive into it. This is an IGTV that says Young Living Business Questions. And we are going to be debunking every single one of them. And this is a major proof of another top leader that is lying to you. Quickly, I do want to highlight if somebody is aware of who this individual is or any other people that are shown in the video, again, I will have it in the comment section down below, but this is no way to target or harass them, nor do I condone that ever. Do not go to their pages and harass them. Keep everything in the comment section down below because that is not appropriate and that is not what I'm trying to represent. I literally hope and pray that they get out of this freaking MLM for crying out loud. So please keep all the comments down here. Do not harass these people. We are using this as an example for educational purposes. Now you know. Okay, so I had put in a question. I've talked to my stories about um, doing like a Q&A for the business specifically because the business, like when you get your starter kit, you never ever have to do the business. It's totally optional. Um, hey, it's totally optional. You never have to do it. You can literally just use it like a Costco membership. You don't have to get a job at Costco. You can just shop at Costco, right? At Young Living, you can just shop at Young Living. You don't ever have to do the business. But if you do, it is incredible. And I highly suggest it. Um, I am a big fan of it. I'm very passionate about what this does for people. Um, you don't even have to be passionate about essential oils or like know everything. You can just be passionate about what is driving you to do an income like this, um, a, an opportunity like this. Okay. So, um, I got started in this business a little over four years ago and, um, a, a lot of questions that I get consistently is like, do you have to be an influencer? Do you have to know a lot of people? What if you're introverted? What if you're not really big on the social whatever, right? Um, can you still do this business? And I will say a hundred million percent yes. Okay, so this is another thing that I'm trying to call out. As we can see, she's trying really hard to make it to where the playing field is completely flat. Like equal in terms of anyone can do this. She's trying to group every single person, introvert, introvert, somebody who has a lot of following or maybe doesn't, everyone in here. And she's highlighting this because she wants anyone to join. It's not about who is actually able or capable of doing anything because you would actually want to focus on people who would be capable of running a business, you think, but except for they don't do that. They don't have actual legit criteria. And another problem is, is they actually push people that are maybe more introvert that want to run the business. They try and shove them out of their comfort zone and change them into what they want to be. That's what happens when you join Young Living is you see people morph into the exact same freaking bubble or mix of essential oils, mind you. You turn into something that you're not. And that's what they try and do is they try and say everyone can do it to entice you at first. And then when they got you in, they're going to be like, all right, this is what you're going to have to do. And if you leave, then you're the lazy person. It's 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 so toxic. And another thing that I really hate is when they're like, you don't have to have a big falling. You don't have to do this. It, following or not, you still need to recruit in this business. So would it help if you had a following? Possibly. But either way, you still need a lot of people that you're able to recruit in order to remotely have a chance of doing well in this. So this is already off to a bad start. 100 million percent yes. Um, you still will have to talk to people. It is a um, networking business where you, it's a relational business. So you are talking to people. Um, but if you're willing to push yourself a little bit, get outside of your comfort zone, then anyone literally can do this. If you're willing to put the work in without having like a big influence. I started this business, um, introverted homebody. I've shared my story, um, several times, but just to kind of share it again, I was not someone that was super social. I didn't have any social media. I had gone through a lot of like, um, just pain in life and in ministry and all these things. And so I was kind of at the place where I was just like, I don't even want to be around people. I don't want to talk to people. I just want to keep my family in a little bubble that is safe. And when I start, I was also going through a lot of health issues, which all brought me to Young Living. And so when I started Young Living, I joined with someone that was on the internet, um, but I knew that she was successful in this business. And I knew enough about network marketing that it mattered who you enrolled with and the team that you were on. So say you just are like, I don't want to be on Brandon's team. I, I just want to get my cat. I just want to order on the internet, right? You can, but then Young Living will assign you to some random team. So it is in your best interest for you to pick a good team, um, one that offers resources and support and help and all that stuff. So 
I knew joining this team that it was going to be a really good team because the person I was joining was very successful in it and knew what they were doing. I had known a lot of people that were selling essential oils, um, but I I wanted to join with someone that I I knew knew what they were doing. Does that make sense? Um, not just somebody that was like selling oils as like a side whatever. I wanted this to be like a hundred percent all in, and I was going to give it everything that I had. And so I knew that I needed like support and advice and wisdom from other people. So that's why I joined the team that I did. Um, and I, I opened, I got my starter kit and then I started my social media accounts. I opened up the oils market and I um, went on Instagram and um, Facebook and just started over. I had had accounts like years ago, but I had deleted them. So I was starting all fresh again. And now, honestly, I didn't really want to be that network marketer that like went to all of her past whatever, um, to like find people from like middle school or whatever, you know, plus I was homeschooled. That'd be like my brothers. <laughs> but anyways, I didn't want to be that, you, you know, I've, I've had so many weird, funky experiences with network marketers. Like there's a lot of people out there that do it wrong and give it a bad name. Network marketing, like as a whole is an incredible business opportunity, incredible business model, and can significantly change your financial situation. See, that's what I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff that they promote. These are leaders. These are top leaders that are trying to manipulate you to join a team because they're trying to say, this is a great opportunity. This is a good business opportunity. And oh, well, I know people that are successful. This is literally trying to make you fall for it. Even though we clearly see in the numbers and statistics, their successes does not exist. It is not there whatsoever. And the losses are higher than the actual gains. The percentage of people who lose money is majorly larger than anyone who's actually making legit money. So saying that this is such a great business opportunity, they're trying to hope that you don't look it up. They're trying to hope that you don't find videos like this and hopes that you'll just join and go for it and it'll be great. When in reality, you're literally going to give them a paycheck and give them a bonus and you are going to be the one falling out and losing a lot of money. Situation. If you put the work in, if someone is, is like telling you that it's quick money, there's I've actually recently there is a company that is messaging all the people um, and they're actually in the works of getting in trouble for it because they're trying to recruit all these people from different network marketing companies. They're being really gross about it, um, messaging all the people and um, they're going to get in a lot of trouble for it. And they're they're promising that quick money like I did this, I unlock this or whatever. Um, if anyone is promising you quick money in any network marketing company, run the heck out of there, okay? Because it actually is a job that takes actual work, um, but if you join the right team, they can help you understand what that work is. And that's something that I am really passionate about. I meet with my team every single week. Every Tuesday, we have our team call Tuesday. We go over business stuff. I talk to my girls on different apps where if they have questions, I will answer them. I will strategize with them. I will help them brainstorm. I will give them advice. I will See, again, it's another thing I want to point out. With her saying, I will help, I will train you, I will do it, just like I said previously. If they actually knew what they were doing and were capable, then the failure rates would not be that high. Again, it's just a crock of shit. It's just completely fake. And also another really problematic thing is most of these people have no experience in terms of health or business for that matter. Most of these people have not even remotely started a real business or done any real business work. So what makes them think that they are actually more than capable of giving any business advice when they have no experience for it, period. This is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. These are top leaders that are lying to you and trying to make you think, oh, I can do it. This is the stuff that they sugarcoat. And also another way that this person is trying to actually manipulate you and make you think that you can do this is they dog on another MLM. They go hardcore on another MLM. But ultimately, ultimately it comes down to you actually doing the work for yourself because it's initially you starting your own business. So you'll have people that can help you and walk with you and give you advice and this is what I did so this is what you should do but ultimately it's still in your hands so you have to decide do I want this and so if anyone's promising you like quick money girl mm -mm, run the heck out of there don't 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 fall for it because every single network marketing company takes actual work so if there's a quick money thing they are scamming you just don't listen to them, okay? So um, recognize that it's a real job, but it's a totally doable job. It's a very simple job. It's not always easy. I promise you, it's not always easy. <laughs> I will be honest with you, but it is a very simple layout, okay? It is helping people to enroll, 
um, to place orders and to help them to do the same thing. Um, so you don't have to do this as a business, but if you want to, there is definitely ways to do it and there's strategy to do it. Um, if you're just, I know a lot of people that have been doing this for years and they don't know, they don't understand the strategy of how to build your business. And so they'll be doing something for years and be stuck at a rank for so long and not progressing. Um, and it breaks my heart because I'm like, oh girl, if you just, you know, signed up on the wrong team, signed up on my team, I would help you. Uh, but still, ultimately, even if you join a rock star team, you still have to do the work. So um, it may not be for everyone. I think anyone can do it if they apply themselves, but not everyone's gonna do that, okay? So here's the deal. I'm gonna go through some questions. Um, and some of the questions were very specific to strategy and things like that. And that is more, um, I'm going to let you have that conversation with your leaders because different teams do different things. Um, I love the way that my team does it, but, um, but I'm, I'm going to leave that up to you and your leaders. That's the benefit of you joining with the team that you did was that you have them to go talk to specifics about that. If you're on my team or you want to be on my team, um, if you're not a Young Living member yet, I would love to sit down with you, help you, strategize with you, give you ideas, what's worked for me, all the things. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the basics, though, basic questions. Um, so is it possible to build a business? I have my questions up here. Is it possible to build a business without being salesy? Um, yes. Yes. I will say this business is selling product. So I get this all the time where they're like, I just don't want to be salesy. So they don't actually own their business and like are proud of it and are telling them like, oh my gosh, girl, you need this. Um, you don't have to be creepy salesy. Like I have definitely seen my fair share of network marketers that like they post everything that they own from their company and they're like, oh my gosh, you could too. And all I see is like, wow, that looks really expensive and like a bunch of unnecessary products that I'm doing just fine without, right? Okay, so this is another perfect example of her trying to dog in another MLM, but at the same time also trying to highlight, oh, this is what's good and this is what's wrong. She's literally trying to say, oh, you can be, you don't have to be salesy. This is another lie that they love to really shove out there is you don't have to be salesy in order to be successful. And that is, again, completely ridiculous because if we look at any, honestly, ML, any MLMers um, account for that matter, but especially Young Living, it's nothing but essential oils and business. That's all it is. There's no actual real self-identity. And so you're constantly, constantly talking about it. And especially if you want to actually do well in the company, you would have to do that essentially in order to do well. And that's why we see most of them talking about it. So you are being salesy if that's all you discuss about on any social media platform. If that's your sole topic and niche, that is a problem and that is very much salesy. But again, they're not gonna try and tell you this because they're trying to get you to join them. That's not what I wanna see. Um, if you're getting, I still, I mean, I just got multiple messages already today from um, other network marketer, other network marketers trying to get me to buy their product. And I'm like, girl, if you just take a minute, you will notice that I already have a full on business, full time business with Young Living. So let's not try to recruit me, right? Um, so there's definitely a, a creepy way to do it. And then there's a way to not be creepy. Okay. So I always say it's only weird if you make it weird. So don't make it weird. Okay. You get to decide if it's weird or not. Um, and so I think there's definitely like a, a weird way to go about it. And then there's like a natural way. So just like, you know, if you recommend products to your friends and you're like, oh my gosh, I just got this sweater at Target and it is the most comfortable thing in the world. You have no problem telling your friend that, right? And you're not getting paid to say that. You're just telling them. You're just being, you're sharing with your friends or on the interwebs or whatever. Oh my gosh, this is like the best ever. That is what we do, except you get paid to do it. Okay, that is again another lie that she's sharing is that something that a lot of multi-level um, marketing just promoters and companies say is, oh, you just share a product and you get paid for it. And you, most of the time you share products all the time, but you don't get paid for it. That is again another lie. So think about this. How realistic is it to walk up to a friend and say, hey, I just bought this essential oil for $55. Again, not everyone is going to look at that and be like, okay, that is worth it. Most people want things that are quality and affordable. And honestly, maybe Young Living might have the quality 
quality in there, but the affordability is very much out of reach. And so, especially when the market is highly oversaturated, the products are so damn expensive, and it's not something that everyone necessarily needs nor wants, the market is not gonna do well for you. You are not gonna be able to succeed or actually profit off of it. Another really big misleading thing that she's saying is sharing does not equal success or money whatsoever. I can share something a lot, but that does not mean somebody is going to buy it from me. And again, just because I talk about it does not mean that you are gonna like I'm gonna make money off of it. And that's exactly what they're trying to say. And we clearly saw with the compensation plan and everything that you literally, in order to make money or actually do well and get paid, you need to freaking recruit. That's the only way to actually really do it. And recruiting is going to require people buying starter kits, which is what funnels in the sales. So no, this is completely false and not true whatsoever. Which is awesome. Um, and so it's just sharing, like, ultimately it's you getting your membership. All you have to do to start up your own business is get a starter kit. It's 165 unless you're getting a cheaper kit and then it's like 125 or whatever. But, um, Basically, the gist of it is get your starter kit and then you can start your own business if you decide to. You don't have to again, but if you decide to, that is all it is. And if you think about like owning a business, if you're going to open up a storefront, my husband and I had thought about um, years ago, we wanted to open up a coffee shop and the amount of money it was going to cost and all the hoops that we had to jump through and the supplies and all, I mean, it was just going to be crazy amount of work and very expensive. And the likelihood of it being successful was like really small. When you open up your own storefront, um, you don't always make money for like a couple of years. And you're basically like your whole life then revolves around starting that company. And then you have to hire people and all that stuff. So this is so different. This is you buying a starter kit and having the opportunity to do your own business. The tricky part about this business is that you are your own boss. And so you have to set a schedule. You have to tell yourself when to work. Okay, so again, this is another beautiful example of her being excessively misleading. She says the startup costs for a coffee shop and then doing all these things were too difficult and too expensive. And for some people, that's too much and they don't want to do it. And I fully respect that. However, that's what real business owners do. Like straight up, that is what real business owners do. That is not starting a business by purchasing a starter kit because did you formulate the essential oils? No. Is your name on the LLC? No. It is not is your name on the products or the development no nothing is you were you didn't have a hand in anything you are essentially buying a kit and are able to make money off of recruitment mainly and possibly some sales but other than that you are pretty much just free marketing for the mlm and you are a glorified customer to them because you are automatically making the money instead of you actually making money don't know what they're talking about in regards to business because half of them have never even run one or started one to begin with and they want to take the easy way out they say that they don't like MLMs that promote easy ways of money, you're essentially trying to do that right now as well. Continuing on with all this, we need to talk about some of the major levels that promoters discuss. So for example, we have the business as a whole, we have the sisterhood, which is a big, big thing they like to promote, the lifestyle, the money, and the trip. So let's dive into all that first. So we've already talked about money before and how there's actually a major lack thereof. So let's move on to the actual sisterhood. So a big, major, honestly terrifying thing is when a lot of MLMs do is another way of drawing you in is when you feel like you need a friend group, a sisterhood, something along those lines. And MLMs are very, very good at manipulation and trying to find your weakness and what you need. And so that is where the sisterhood part plays in. If you are maybe a mom that just wants some mom friends, well, that's what a lot of these people do because the main demographic is women and a lot of them are moms. A lot of these people suddenly are trying to relate to you saying, oh, I was a lonely mom too. And that's another way that they try to get you in. They give you purpose. That's what they try to do is they give you purpose. And if they ask you about why this would be a good opportunity for you, what you need, they're automatically filling in the young living answer for you. So for example, if I say, well, I really want a sisterhood, they're like, okay, great. Well, young living provided that for me so it can provide that for you. Oh, well, I really, really feel lonely. Well, young living brought me this. It's always the answer of young living. And it's always trying to insert an answer for you and claim that young living will bring all of this stuff to you when it doesn't even exist. But the really sad reality reality about it is is how they use the sisterhood for such a major manipulation when it is honestly such a toxic environment. Most of the time I see so many moms that join this in hopes of having comfort and understanding and other fellow parents that understand that are able to work with them and develop with them. However, it starts becoming a very toxic and highly pressured community because think about it here. Let's say you have an upline and this upline again recruited you because they want to make some money and um, join and 
They want to make some money and grow in the business. However, they just recruit you and you are an important asset to them simply because you can give them money. That's pretty much how it goes. So at first, it's very loving. When you join the Young Living Com- business, most of the time, it is su- they're going to love bomb the hell out of you, meaning they're going to praise you. They are going to try and lock arms with you as they say they're going to do everything that they can to make you feel appreciated special and like this company is a dream come true that's what they do at first then it starts getting serious where if you're not providing money for them if you are not actually hitting ranks if you're not recruiting enough people maybe you're not showing up to the zoom training calls because you have things to do and like life happens suddenly it becomes toxic and there's so much pressure i've seen it happen throughout every single mlm and young living is no different this is the thing that they do they're the same ones that post pictures of their groups and like oh my gosh what would i do with Without my young living you know boss babes however the, the same people that are chewing each other's asses out behind the scenes getting mad when somebody doesn't hit rank and overall are catty and gross behind the scenes another thing that i want to talk about as well is the same sisterhood that so many people promote in this business is the same one that will immediately shun you and shut you out the second that you leave this company. There are many people that where they actually leave the Young Living business, they are immediately shunned, hated on, deleted from group messages, and treated like complete shit. Even though they have a different perspective and do not want to be a part of the MLM anymore, they're immediately treated terribly because they are not a part of it. So the mentality we see for so many people in Young Living is you're either a part of this company and make me money, or you're just a terrible person and we truly don't care to you, about you. And it's so sad to me because we see so many vulnerable individuals who join this company and think that it's going to provide so much for them. But then when they leave, they literally feel like that they were just a wasted dollar sign and they were literally money in the eyes of the people that recruited them. So moving on to the topic of lifestyle, we know a lot of times many things are involving with Instagram is highly fake. I could easily post up a doctor in a picture and it could like anyone can do that is what I'm saying. And why I'm discussing it is we see constantly all of these promoters talking about their financial freedom, the money, the sisterhood, the trips, all of it. And almost all of it is a complete facade. We see the numbers proving this. We see all the other statistics and everything leading up to this, showing that everyone is literally lying on social media to you. And it's so sad to me because they're trying to use any little aspect of this company to promote a lifestyle. And that's their main focus is promoting a lifestyle to you in hopes that you will join them. So maybe like the post about their income that they, you know, mark off the total that they receive from Young Living, maybe the trip, all of it is a facade. It's not actually happening or it's literally being manipulated into something that it's not. Lastly, let's actually talk about these trips because this is something that is major. So Young Living actually hosts a lot of leadership trips according to different ranks. So sometimes they have some for the very, very top leaders. Sometimes they have trips for the lower leaders and so on and so forth. So there are qualifications and requirements to actually get into these com- into these company trips. Um, sometimes they actually have like conferences. However, the uh, conferences aside, there are very, very specific trips that are all-inclusive special trips. And oh my gosh, I've seen people milk the hell out of this and it's a complete lie. So right now I'm actually going to read off some information that I'm going to be popping up on the screen here. So by seeing a lot of these leaders on paid for trips, we think that it's actually something that's, you know, a little incentive or bonus for them being pretty much a glorified customer. However, no, it's not. So if we actually look, um, referring to a 2019 silver retreat, they state that they cover all parts of the trip minus incidental costs such as meals during the travel, airline baggage fees, and everything will be covered at your expense. Expense. But something they also don't mention is the fact that you are actually taxed on literally anything that they spend on you or you spend. So whenever, like, let's say they do, in fact, pay for a hotel and flights, let's say they do, and it's an all-inclusive. So that might be a couple thousand dollars. For $10.99, you're literally going to be taxed on that. So let's say $2,000. We're going to do at least 25% of that. That's $500 that you have to pay in taxes on something that was supposed to be free. Hmm. Not to mention the problematic requirements that they have in order to actually even remotely be a part of these trips. Requirements such as maybe having teams, having OGV, PGV, whatever the hell. Requirements of sales from your legs or your downline. Requirements of sales from you. Having it consistently a matter of three months or so. You literally rack up thousands and thousands of dollars and either recruit a lot of people in order to get to those trips. Sometimes buying into it just so you qualify so that way you can go to these trips but it's not even worth it and it sucks to me because that's another incentive that they market off to you as something that will be so much fun and it's worth it and they really value us young living truly cares about us they don't because they know that they're able to freaking get so much money out of you and this is another really sad thing when it comes to the trips there's a lot of people that want to get onto it right however there's limited amounts of people and there's high requirements and they also have a specific timeline that all of this needs to be done by so we have 
thousands of people that are working towards these trips and busting their asses and recruiting like crazy. And Young Living is profiting off of this like no other because they know everyone is trying to earn this trip. And then when only a small percentage of them all gets there and they made a shit ton of money off of this, it is honestly, and I'm being very real here, a bribe to you because this is a bribe of trying to let me really pamper you, make you feel special. So that way you feel like you're being treated well by this company, you're more brainwashed, and then you go back to your team after the trip, you talk about it and you promote it more and it gets your team more motivated to potentially go with you the next year. And then it's just the cycle continues on. It's a bribe to you. It's not like they actually care. They literally are trying to find any way to keep you interested, keep you enticed, and try and keep the people that are on your downline interested as well. So sadly, we are still not done yet with how toxic this community is. Much more to cover, including now diving into the products. So they promote a really healthy lifestyle, right? We see all these people trying to eat clean, all the great essential oils. They literally hold these essential oils to such a high standard in regards to their mental health, their physical, emotional, literally every single thing under the sun, they claim that these essential oils absolutely transform them, which is again, very false and very terrifying. But really let's dive into the products though, because those are honestly very problematic as well. So we already know that they are honestly very overpriced. Um, right now I'm actually looking at some information. The cost varies for a lot of essential oils. For example, some can range from $34.87 to $62 for the essential oil singles. Then the cost for essential oil blends can actually range from $100 to even $50 for $115 milliliter sized oil and that is insanely ridiculous and seeing from our previous looks at the lawsuits and how they honestly overprice everything so that way you feel like you're getting a very high quality special item it's literally a cash grab from you thinking that it's high quality unique all incredible essential oils when it's a crock of shit you can literally get from walmart for a couple bucks i'm not even kidding so right over here on the website they have a section called the dietary essential oils and these are ones that are apparently made to ingest so we have things like basil bergamot black pepper and the list goes on and on and these are still excessively expensive and it's quite alarming one of them even can range from about $41 to even 50 or more it's insane and they are so tiny and these are ones that are marketed off to you as ingestible and amazing for you and your health as they sell essential oil diffusers now I love essential oil diffusers but I would spend about 30 bucks maybe maybe $50 on one but how come we have one that's literally costing $300 and sure they might have some cheaper ones but what is the reason for that when you can find essential oil diffusers on Amazon or any other small businesses for that matter for so much cheaper? And honestly, all of this is simply just showing me that they are overpriced bullshit products. And it's so sad to me because there are many people that really don't understand things in regards to health. They don't have any medical background or anyone guiding them in regards to their purchases. And so it's so sad to me how Young Living is literally promoting all of this stuff, discussing how it cleanses the body. It's healthy, non-toxic. So guys, now we are actually going to be diving into the interview part of this video. Now, this is a very, very important one because it gives you real insight to both perspectives about people that are a part of the MLM versus are not. Now, I actually will say and clarify that I actually asked a lot of inter people who I wanted to interview to email me in regards to their previous experiences with Young Living. So I have many people that used to be a part of Young Living that are sharing a lot of things. And then I was actually very fortunate and lucky enough to have somebody reach out to me that is actually a part of Young Living and was willing to be interviewed. I definitely don't want to expose her name because I don't want her getting harassed in any way or nothing, but I I truly want to say that I really appreciate her willingness to be able to share her truth and be able to just, you know, share her perspective with me because I think it's very important for this research purpose and just talking about all this in general. So before we talk into this, though, please have complete respect about these stories. And I actually will share all the questions that I had with all these individuals. So let's dive into all these questions. So these are the questions that I want to ask the people who used to be a part of Young Living. The first question was, how was your experience in Young Living? Um, were, there, were there any fees requirements for you to pay to stay active? Was there great pressure on recruitment? Do you need to recruit to do well in the business? Do you have financial success? Did you have financial success? If you didn't, how did that affect your relationship with your team and upline? Did you accumulate any debt? Was there any major promotion of the ingestion of essential oils? Did you accumulate any debt? Was there any major promotion of the ingestion of essential oils? When you left, how was it handled by your upline and team? How were you treated? Are there any other stories or details you want me to share with the audience? So I was able to put these questions out there and we were actually gonna filter through people who had experience uh, young living and who have recently left. So let's dive into the first one. 
So this first one says, my experience in Young Living was not pleasant to say the least. There was a constant pressure to be posting about the oils on po people posting who maybe mentioned really anything, whether it was stress, sore muscles, poor digestion, sleep issues, you name it. We were supposed to have an oil for support. Now I'm not saying that oils can't be a good thing, but come on, not for everything. We constantly had to be posting about the opportunity, getting on Zoom calls for team meetings, being told to do personal development. It was always pushed to be a product of the product. So use your oils in the morning to wake up, use them throughout the day for digestion, use them at night for sleep, use them after workout. Basically, we had to be covered in oils all day. Additionally, there was the stereotypical, if you're not seeing success, it's because you're not working hard enough, when I would literally be busting out three to four, sometimes five times a day, inviting to oil classes and talking to people about oils. You have to live, breathe, and eat and sleep young living. Oh, and you basically have to worship Gary Young like he was Jesus. See, a lot of these, that's another thing I keep forgetting, a lot of these people glorify Gary Young, and I don't know why. He is a terrible human being. Yes, there were fees in order to stay active. So in order to stay as an active consultant, you had to have a $50 personal um, PV, which means you have to personally pay, um, order something specifically each month in order to stay active, which most of the time was over $50. This is how I reactivated my account under a different upline. Yes, they got me twice. Now that was not how you earn commissions. In order to earn commissions, you had to place a $100 PV which was almost always over a hundred dollars even if you miss one month without a five hundred dollar personal volume personal purchase essential rewards auto ship you were automatically considered inactive was there great pressure from recruitment yes and no yes because you know they are always selling a lifestyle so in order to live that lifestyle you have to recruit because you wanted to reach royal crown diamond the top rank they made it seem so achievable although as if as of the 2019 income disclosure statement less than 0.1 percent make it to that rank the reason i say no is because they would often mention buying ranks for example they Thank you. For example, the first rank of stars only required 100 PV to make commission and then group volume of a 500 PV. I have personally seen women who would purchase over $500 worth of products just to reach that rank of star and even further ranks. They would buy a crap ton of products to get their group volume up closer to the requirement to rank up. Also, they would love do the love bombing when someone would rank up so naturally. You would want to have that recognition and you would push to recruit and rank up as well so you would receive that. The next one, did you need to recruit to do well in the business? Yes, absolutely. I needed to recruit in order to do well or make any money in the business. Additionally, as long as you had that $100 um, personal purchase in order to make commissions, they do make money when someone signs up a premium starter kit. I had one woman sign up and she really did it just for the kit discount. And I got $50 from her signing up. If they say they don't make any money when someone signs up, they are lying. And that is, that is a fact point blank period. Five, um, I asked if she had financial success. She said, absolutely not. I did not have financial success other than the $50 I gained. When that woman signed up, I made no money. Now I did earn points that I could cash in for so-called free product, which was nice, I will say, but I still had to basically pay for those points by making monthly orders. This next one, I asked about her relationship between her upline and her when she left. This has really affected my relationship because to be honest, I was pissed. I was doing all the things they were telling me to do and still not getting any results. Finally, it got to the point where I started using my brain and realized that I was putting too much into this, both time and money to continue it. I canceled my auto ship and submitted a form to have my account terminated and I left. My upline did try and guilt trip and love bombing into staying by and complimenting me and giving me the BS about, you can do this, you're doing all the right things, we will miss you, we want you on our team, blah, blah, blah. I did not receive any hate nor hateful comments, but the gaslighting was insane. Okay, that's good. I'm glad that you didn't receive major hate. I would say yes and no about the debt. While I did multiply multiple monthly orders of over $100. I did honestly use them and I am still using them today only because I paid a butt ton of money. Um, I was in oil into oils before Young Living and I'm into essential oils after Young Living. I wouldn't say the money spent was always a negative thing since I do use essential oils almost daily. I say yes because I did end up paying a ton of money for them when I could have just gotten the same quality oils as a much better price. Additionally, I was in debt with my time. I put so much time into trying to be successful that I will never get back. So yes, I did accrue money monetary debt, but I'm still using the oils today and so the last question was um she spawned oh my gosh yes i was pushed so hard to add oils to your water or add them to your tea one thing they love to push and i stupidly posted about and did was placing drops of oil into gelatin capsules with a carrier oil and taking them as pills i personally have digestive issues and i was told to use their digestive blend in a capsule for digestive support well it didn't work and it tasted disgusting they also told me to take their so-called hormone support blend in a capsule just like the digestive one during a time I was struggling with my menstrual cycle and finding the correct birth control. That's a whole other story. One of their other popular items is the 
oh boy, I cannot pronounce this, I'm sorry, but y'all probably, I'll pop a picture up, you'll know what I'm talking about, um, which has essential oils in it. These women drink this stuff like it's going out of style. And when I tried it, you could literally taste all the oils in it. Not only would they push ingestion, but they made so many false medical claims that I could write a book about them. While I personally never say them on a public post, they would post them in private groups and say, this, see, this is why people need oils, or we have an oil for everybody and everything. Truly revolting. Now, um, Again, she said, as she mentioned about previously, that she was love bombed, gaslit, and guilted into staying, which thankfully she didn't happen. Um, she didn't stay. She was lucky to stay in, and she didn't have any negative comments or remarks made about her. And so, a very last birth control, they have a product that has supposedly natural progesterone in it. They would have advertised this as a natural alternative to birth control. So, there would be women who were on birth control for a variety of medical and non medical reasons who would stop taking birth control only to use this oil with progesterone in it. Now, it was mentioned not to use it while in hormone no birth control only however there was a sense of fear mongering that my team did at least that would lead women to get off the birth control pill and move to this oil blend this is this is the kind of shit i'm talking about this is disgusting during this time i was struggling with my menstrual cycle and with finding the right birth control in between birth control options i tried this oil and other than smelling good it did absolutely nothing and i used it as directed every single day nothing changed my cycle actually got worse and all of the symptoms associated with periods were severely in addition, I was severely deficient in iron leading to lightheadedness and even blackouts with my period, so I needed hormonal birth control. When I finally found one that worked for me, I was told, why haven't you tried the pro Progressins Plus? Why are you starting on hormonal birth control when you can have all natural? I was pissed. I felt like if they really cared about my well-being and being so wellness positive, why would it matter if I was working for me? Additionally, there were numerous women making medical claims about it, helping with fertility issues, menstrual issues, and menopausal issues. It was absolutely disgusting. So, so, so this is another beautiful example of the crazy unrealistic expectations the amount of time that people put and they are not compensated for whatsoever and then furthermore the insane medical claims and products that are being pushed onto people this is a cult now um i want to also let you guys know all of these people did not have a connection with each other they individually messaged me and reached out so this is another example of what i want to talk about story says hi my experience with young living was good until it wasn't i actively did the business for almost two years and the highest rank i ever hit was star which is the only the first rank See exactly what I'm talking about. It's hard to get to the ranks. I was doing everything that my upline told me to do, but I just wasn't growing my business. I was consistently sharing about the products. I was trying to make new connections. I was reading all the business and mindset books. I was literally not doing, I was literally doing all the things. Nothing was working. When I reached out to my upline about feeling defeated, they told me that I need to continue making new connections and keep using the products. They were really big on being a product of the product. Again, another example from a different person. They were you had to spend $100 a month to make commissions, but they highly encouraged spending $300 so that you would always try new products to be able to share about. See, literally, when the average amount of money that somebody makes a year is about $269, I believe, if correct me if I'm wrong, I'll pop it over here, and people are spending $100 a month You've got to be, nobody is breaking even on this then. No one really is truly breaking even. It, the Most of them are losing money during this, truly. I almost never broke even. Luckily, I did not acquire any debt, but I did spend thousands of dollars over the course of a few years. They did recommend ingesting certain oils, but we had to be extremely careful about what we said on social media because we could get in trouble by the FDA. I absolutely believe that you need to recruit to be successful in this business. When I told my upline that I was stepping away from the business, they didn't have much to say and they haven't checked in with me since. I realized that the community and friendship they claimed we had was all business based. And now that I'm not doing the business, they have no reason to talk to me. Let me know if you have any other questions. Another perfect example that is proving my point about how when the friendships are ending, it is done. Like when you are out of the business, they could care less about you as a person. This is just terrifying, you guys. This is another story from another individual that I want to read off. One, your, my experience was horrible. I joined two different times, mainly because my friend kept hounding me to, I'm a pushover, LOL. Two, yes, I had to buy a kit. The kit was $150 and you had to sign up for essential rewards, which is the monthly membership to stay active. So again, at first I didn't realize that there was a, a, a a fee to stay active but again i was wanting to hear both sides of this clearly we have three stories now that are lining up to this saying that there are fees and requirements to stay active in this business you are going to spend a lot of money just trying to stay and exist there recruiting was the main focus and i was forced to sell kits and not individual oils because kits got you more money kits exactly what i'm talking about in the three months i was involved i spent roughly two thousand dollars just to stay active with the rewards you have to spend at least seventy dollars to keep the status active 
I sold two lots and in order to receive my commission, I had to spend $200 more and it was basically getting reimbursed for it, which never received my money ever, even spending over $200 a month. My upline didn't do good either, so so she's no longer is involved either, but her upline was and she's still ugly towards me. Yes, ingestion was a major part as well as curing mental illness, all sicknesses. Th third story here, proving the ingestion stuff is insane. So one time I put lemon vitality in a cup of water and the cup was styrofoam and within minutes it was melting the styrofoam. It was horrible. And that is a thing that they promote constantly is ingesting that damn essential oil. Put a lemon in water, please, for the love of God. I, I, if anyone's watching this, put a lemon in water, a legit lemon slice. Don't put essential oils. Do not eat essential oils. Do not call poison control, please. Do not do it. Also, my boyfriend had an allergic reaction to the most of the oils, and especially the thieves. I had to take him to the hospital because of it, so I immediately threw it out. I'm a clinical mental health counseling graduate student, so when I was on weekly Zoom calls and they said oils cure mental illness, I had completely come apart. That's when I got out. I hope this well helps. Can't wait for the deep dive. I literally, it's like I'm speechless at this point. There are so many stories proving my point and proving that there's so many things that a lot of people, sadly, that our promoters won't share or some of them don't even know that it's existing. Next up, we're actually gonna be talking to somebody that actually is a part of this MLM, Young Living. Again, I also wanna say that I was very, very fortunate to be able to speak with this woman. She's very, very kind to me and I really appreciate her honesty and just talking about this overall. I also wanna say as well, I really do believe I was able to represent other people's perspectives in the MLM um, with this interview, along with showing other people discussing it from their own social media platforms platforms, I feel like that's the best representation of how they feel is with what they're sharing and promoting and talking about constantly. So anyways, I do want to say I am very thankful and appreciative of this individual. Please no hate to this person. I am just very happy that we were able to have a mutual and kind discussion. Um, real quickly, I do want to read off all the questions that I did send her way and then we are be able to dive into this. So the first one is how has your experience been with Young Living? Are there any fees to stay active? Are there bare minimum amounts you need to make to get paid? For example, does Young Living have a $25 minimum of sales to get Missions. Is there any pressure to recruit? Do you need to recruit to do well in the business? Are there chances for financial success great? Have you been trained to run your young living business? If so, in what way? Is there a common theme of promoters promoting the ingestion of essential oils? And is there, if there's any other information would you like to share, um, please feel free to. So I asked her all these questions and so she responds with the first one. I feel like I've had a unique experience because I have had two experiences with young living. The first started good but turned negative. I was introduced to essential oils by a friend. I started using them and I loved them. I told my friend I was not interested in doing the business. I simply just wanted to buy products at a full price and use them because I like them. Naturally, when you like something and use it every day, people notice, so I started sharing my products with them, giving away my products that I purchased for free because I was excited to share something I love. Then I had people interested in buying some because I was not interested in doing the business. I passed them off to my friend, upline, to purchase from so I wouldn't have to deal with the business side. After doing this for a few times, my upline told me even if I don't want to do the business, I should still let people purchase from me, and if I made money, great, and if not, that's fine too since I didn't have interest in it. I agreed. I quickly started earning more money than I was spending. Please note this is not normal my upline took notice keep in mind when I made money so did my upline because of the structure that's when things started to change I felt pressure to sell I felt slimy and I hated it and completely stopped using the products and ghosted all my customers I didn't purchase anything for 12 months which made my account inactive after my break, I realized how much I missed using my Young Living products, but I didn't like the team environment I was in, so I forfeited my downline and switched teams. My new team is amazing. There was no pressure on me to sell anything. In fact, my direct upline recently took a few months off. We keep in touch, not talking about oils, checking in, and when she came back, it was like she never left. What I love is when our team members start to portray dishonesty or salesy posts on our social media, our leader calls them out on it. That's why I don't mind watching anti ml content, because in a way, we do this internally as a team. We never want to be ingenuine or greasy salespeople. This team is all about essential oil education, making sure we as distributors are always up to date on training, education, and health news surrounding essential oil products. My leadership always, um, always answers my calls, text DMs whenever I need them, and they treat me like a human. They remember details in my life that I share with them, and I feel like they genuinely see me as a person and not just as a number in their downline. All that to say, my current experience with Young Living is amazing. I love the products, my Young Living community, and I love being able to share education surrounding low toxic options. Are there any fees to stay active? No, you can go up to 12 months without making a single purchase or logging into your account before your account becomes inactive. And then, are there any bare minimum amounts to get paid? Um, 
how much do you have to spend in order to get paid essentially um yes and no as i shared in an earlier email young living is changing the comp plan on may 1st yes currently a distributor has to pay i have to spend a hundred dollars um per volume personal volume which is you know a, a purchase but sometimes it can vary starting on may 1st if the distributor is ranked one of the lower rank four ranks they do not have to spend 100 pv alone and so the 100 pv can be made up if any purchases they or any other customers make like a pv pool system and the distributor is one of the top ranks then they must spend 100 pv themselves i have to have to screenshot for the recent training explaining this link and the link to the actual video which is awesome i really appreciate that is there any pressure to recruit this will vary person to person and my first experience yes i feel pressure to recruit my current team i feel no pressure whatsoever and i don't actively recruit every customer I have reached out to me first asking about the products. I sent them some to try completely on me and free to them. And if they came back saying they wanted to purchase, I walked them through the website and I have a few of my customers say they are interested in building a team in which we have long talks about with what that entails, the good, the bad, the ugly. If they still think they're a good fit if we work in an MLM business structure, I introduce them to my upline who does the business full time for training and next steps. Do you need to recruit to do well in the business? In my opinion, in the past, yes, you do need to recruit a strong team to be successful in the business. Presently, no, I do not believe success lies in the weight of recruiting. From my experience, as long as you have repeat customers on your business will stay afloat. To clarify, when I say customers, I don't mean other distributors under you. I mean the person down the street who came over for dinner, like the essential oil hand soap in your restroom and wants to order it a few times a year with no commitment. Um, as long as she keeps coming back every now and then to buy products, she will be good. When you don't have a strong customer base, repeat customers, or new customers, then you can start drowning or losing money. Are there chances for financial su su success? Great. Long term, yes. Short term, no. I've attached the most recent income disclosure statement with our back office according to the ids and my personal experience people who stick with it you use the products and share with others for four plus years financially become financially successful those who join because they were promised to make money fast get frustrated very quickly and quit at a financial loss you will not get rich quick that is a lie i think this is responsibility weighs heavily on your upline and their morals and my first experience when i started making money i was introduced to the arm um, the uh, I was introduced to an RCD, the highest rank possible. Uh, showed her lifestyle, and although it was never explicitly told me that her results were normal and uh, were not normal, it was implied that I could achieve the same thing overnight. This is when things took a negative turn for me. When people started dangling money in front of you, that's manipulative, and so I ghosted and I went inactive. I do wholeheartedly believe if you are consistent, authentically genuine, and love using the products for at least four to five years, it's inevitable to reach financial success. In my own experience, I start earning more than I was spending with six months, and that was without me understanding the comp plan at all. I was just genuinely loving and sharing the products. Again, this is not normal, but proof that authentic goes a long way because I didn't care about the money. I was free to be myself, and in turn, I made it legitimately. Have you been trained to run your young living business? If so, in what way? Every team is different. It matters who you purchase or sign up under. My first team, I did not offer any kind of support. Their way of training was just pushing to sell, sell, sell. My current team, as a customer, I have access to weekly Zoom calls to learn about how to safely and effectively use my products. Once I showed interest in learning about the young living business side, I was invited to trainings meant for those who want to learn about earning commissions. We have monthly Zoom calls as a team and individual calls with our leadership to do one-on-one -on -one trainings. We're also encouraged to tune into the company-wide training Young Living provides every Monday and Friday. The one-on-one -on -one training is then walking us through the entire back office, all the legal documents, budgeting, taxes, the comp plan, realistic timelines for making money, FTC compliance when sharing and going through your lifestyle to see you can incorporate the products into your everyday life. Is there a common theme of promoters? Um, ingesting the oils in my old team yes and i deem unhealthy amounts and my new team no they are only promoting ingestion of the oils labeled in the young living vitality product line which they are not fda approved but fda compliant but even then i won't say it's a theme of promotion if i ask them if i should consume it they would redirect me to the documentation about the fda compliance but none of our team and leaders are going to run ingesting a bunch of oils i never really see that with my new team just my old one if there are any other information you would like to share please feel free something i see a lot of anti-mlm videos is that people in mlms are not entrepreneurs i agree if you are solely making money from the mlm structure whether it's considered independent work or whatever bottom line you're working for that company something i never see brought up is the actual entrepreneurial side i can't speak for all mlms but being a part of young living you can make money outside of it by using their products for example one of my leaders loves diy products she makes diy beauty products like bath bombs scrubs perfumes facial moisturizers etc and she's an Etsy shop where she creates and sells these homemade products she pays taxes on her income she has a small office space where she makes everything and ships it out and she uses young living products and some of her products because of that she can create a small business account with young living and set them up as a vendor similar to when a youtube creator has merch your source the merch through vendors but it's your product brand business that's how it works if you have a business account with young living you can create whatever products you want 
jewelry, silk, scrubs, bath bombs, etc., and set Young Living up as a vendor that you source your essential oil products from at a discounted price, but the shop, boutique, or products are your small business. You can also deep dive into the essential oil health and wellness and publish papers, books, educational tools with scholarly backup and make money. I've seen people mix and make their own roller blends, make children's books about oils and plants. There are so many things, ways outside of the MLM structure to make money using Young Living products. I just wanted to highlight that. I think it's assumed that when MLM members say that they are entrepreneurs, they mean that they are recruiting in an MLM, but a good portion of the time it's because they're using the MLM products to build a side business too. I know MLM products tend to be more expensive than most, I started using Young Living in my early 20s. I am now in my early 30s. My perspective on this, I don't think these products are for everyone. As I get older and grow my family, enter new stages in life, I am at the point where I don't mind paying a little bit more for the quality of the product. In my early 20s, I had no business buying these. Haha, <laughs> they were way out of my budget, but I really think Young Living products are targeted towards middle-aged people with families and different health priorities. I can see the difference in quality between store-bought and Young Living products. I didn't see it before, but now that I've used it and took a year off and used store brand products, I see it now. No shade one way or another i just think if you manage your money wisely prioritize what you buy and actually use the product the pricing can work in your favor and there are ways to get around the high pricing but again depending on how much support your upline gives you if they are a good leader they will teach you ways to budget manage and shop efficiently to ensure you are not spending more than you are making all in all i know mlm structures have a bad rep having good both and bad experience and one i feel like they get a bad rep because some people who abuse them i met some really good honest genuine people in the mlm i like to consider myself one to the point if someone approached me about joining to make a lot of money, I feel like I'd have to turn them away. I use and share and help other products um, purchase these products with integrity. If you have no interest in using low non-toxic products to support your lifestyle, then I don't want you on my team. My goal is to help share how to create a healthier home. Let me know if there's anything else I can help with. Wishing you luck on this deep dive, and I hope I shared some positives of being a part of Young Living. I kindly ask that you keep my name anonymous, but feel free to share anything that I've said here today. So really want to highlight. Now, again, I want to say, uh, I really want to just clarify this. I do not think all people in MLMs are bad? Do I feel like they are part of something that is not okay? Yes. Do I have full respect for this individual? Wholeheartedly, 100%. Do I still not agree all the time? Absolutely. So in regards to a good point that she made was how there are some companies where you can have essentially use the MLM as a vendor, which is yes, you can create yourself as a business while using those products. And I will also say, I don't think purchasing a product from an MLM is bad. I understand people find favorites and appreciate that. My personal stance on it is it just still is benefiting a unethical company at the same time that also can do other negative things. Like for example, though, let's say if you do purchase a product and you like a product, um, and again, if you purchase a product that is totally on you, in a way though, it does still support maybe an upline that might not be very ethical. And I do really appreciate her experience and her sharing her experience on both the negative and the positive, because what's also really sad to me is there are some positive experiences with this. However, there's a lot of negative experiences and people that don't know what they're doing, people that are treating their downlines terribly. and. I'm very glad that she opened up about her good and healthy experience with this, and I think that's really awesome to share, but I personally have seen more negative than positive. And honestly, I will absolutely say, I think it's very, very good of Young Living to cut out the $100 requirement in order to make money. I think that's kind of a crock of shit to have that as a requirement. But nonetheless, I really stu still feel like it is mainly a requirement for recruitment. I still personally believe that after looking at all of the numbers and everything, I personally think that it is very problematic, unethical, and not good whatsoever. So. Right there, guys, we have been able to kind of wrap up this video talking about some interviews and people that have had experiences with Young Living, good and bad. I wanted to share all of it with you guys so we can have a lot of representation in what these people talk about, what people who aren't a part of it talk about, and so on and so forth. So to wrap up this video, let's do a quick summary. So first of all, let's talk about Gary Young. Gary Young is the CEO. He has a very unethical history of using of starting up unlicensed clinics. He also created Young Living, which has had a very bad history of unethical actions, lawsuits, et cetera. So we have that first. Moving on then, we actually have other things like the comp plan and the income disclosure statement. The income disclosure statement states that on average, people make, I think about $269 a year. Again, if I'm saying that number wrong, I will pop it up here again. It also says that it takes a long time in order to actually be able to most of the time get to those ranks or even remotely hit that. And also even still, it showed on the income disclosure statement that 98.8% of people on average 
percentage made an average of about 500 something a year, which is still very, very low, especially considering that we have currently a hundred dollar requirement that's very, very bad. And mind you, if they cut it out and like she showed that they're cutting it out, I think that's good. But nonetheless, there are still other fees and taxes and requirements that are still very difficult to deal with. And if we clearly see by the numbers, most people do not make money or do well, then that's still not going to really benefit a lot of people no matter what, even though it is saving them some money in the long run still, it's going to be difficult. Now moving on to just the promoters as a whole, promoting things like the trips, financial gain, lifestyle, a lot of it is very unrealistic and honestly very unethical in the way that they go about it. Moving on as well with the products, a lot of the thing, ways that they promote their products, including ingestion and the way that they treat it is honestly very alarming and terrifying. And that's the thing is when I look up a lot of Young Living and I scroll through the hashtags, that's what I mainly see. I mainly see the unethical approach about it versus where the last story explained an actual better approach to it, which I'm very thankful for. But nonetheless, though, moving on to the trips are in no way free. You are going to have to pay a lot of money on that and taxes on that as well, which is very um, um, problematic and sad because they are promoting something that just is not like they're saying it's free, but it's not. Um, and then again with the products, I personally, in my opinion, from looking at that, that feeling, it's a lot, it's really, really expensive. I personally think you can find high quality products and you don't have to purchase through an MLM. Actually, if you guys are curious, I will have um, essential oils linked in the description below that I personally love, that I think are actually amazing and are not that expensive compared to Young Living. Also with the unhealthy pro um, promotion of ingestion of the products, it's really, really sad and it can also be very, very dangerous. And then lastly, we saw many representations of examples of stores of people who did have bad experiences and then we also had another one who actually really enjoyed it and was able to share a lot of good insight and I greatly appreciate all stories but honestly this gives you a lot of information to take and kind of figure out is it worth it for you is it not is this something you should join my personal opinion would I honestly tell people to avoid the hell out of it absolutely that's my personal opinion and perspective with all this information but my goal in all this and in this entire video was to share all the information to you get both sides of the story just put all of the information here share my thoughts as well so that way you can look at this and make a decision also for yourself. Now guys, with finishing up this video, if you know of somebody who's interested in joining in living, if they're confused, if they don't know all the information, please send this video to them, tag them, share this video so that way we can get this out so that way we can just have all the information put out in front of everyone because everyone deserves to see the full truth, all of it, all the information, good, bad, the ugly, and put it all out there so that way everyone can see and be educated and make good decisions for themselves and hopefully can be protected from pretty predatory scams if I'm being real here. And so that was it. This was an excessively long video and I'm so sorry, but I greatly appreciate guys sticking around and watching all of this thank you so much don't forget to like comment share and subscribe if you guys have any other additional information about young living please share it down in the description below if you have links as well please comment them down below so i can check them and potentially link them in my description as well i love you all so much don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to the channel and i will see you all in the next video stay glowing my beautiful queens love you bye